and his praises. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. There was this song that, this was a song that my mom would have taught me years ago that I used to play at Harvest. Long time ago. Y'all know the song? I was asking Fabian, I don't know if he could cure it up. Then find it. Or we can just sing it together. Well, I ain't gonna raise it, but we could get somebody. If you want joy, let me hear you. Your sins, your sins, he washed away. Your night, he'll turn to day. Your life, he'll make it or anew. If you want joy, if you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let you. Jesus coming to your heart. Amen. If you want joy, definitely let Jesus come into your heart. So what fuels us this, today? What has fueled us over the years? What keeps us going? What motivates us to go on? When we are tired and when we are weary and feel as though we are our wits end, what keeps us going? What empowers us? What is our gas station? Where do we get our fuel from? That fuel comes from Jesus. That joy empowers us and it keeps us going. I'm glad to be part of the joy ministry this morning. And I'm sure that throughout the years, you would have gained many experiences. Many of you can write a book on life journeys. And if you do, I'm looking forward to, read that book, to, to reading that book. So my question to you this morning, when we think about joy and happiness, are they the same thing? Yes or no? Is joy and happiness? Think about it for a moment. Is happiness and joy the same thing? And most of you will say no. Because we know that when we think about the word of God and we think about that word happy, the word happy, the word used to describe happy in the Greek is makarios. It is the same word also used for blessed. It is used about 50 times in the New Testament. But when we speak about happiness, we are talking about an emotion. We are talking about something that comes and goes depending on our circumstances. It is conditional. So one person puts it, happiness depends on happiness, on happening, sorry. Happiness depends on happenings. I know most of the time, we spent a lot of money and energy and time in the quest for happiness. We try to achieve happiness through material gains. We try all sorts of things. But we know that happiness is fleeting. It is here today, and by before we even get outside, it's gone. We only got to hear some bad news. And it steals, it takes away the happiness that we all would have been expressing so earlier. God wants us to be happy. There's no doubt about that. In fact, he outlines in Psalms 1, and as I said, you know, happiness, or the word happy, 
is also interchangeably used with blessings. So in Psalms 1, if there are some versions that actually translate that word. We, you, you know from the King James Version that starts about blessed is the man. But another version puts it this way, happy is the man. So let's look at um, Psalms 1 quickly. I don't know if we have another version that talks about happy, but we can easily replace it. But it says happy, and this is some advice. Okay, here we go. How happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path of sinners or join a group of mockers? We recognize that God has given us Biz, or the formula for which we can be happy if we follow after certain things. So as I said before, God wants us to be happy. We talked about the Beatitudes. Blessed is the man that does this. Blessed is the man that does that. Or happy is the man. So we recognize that happiness comes by, you know, sometimes what we achieve in life. Some of the things that we gain some of the experience that we will share from time to time. But as I said, it is fleeting. It is conditional. And it can be easily lost sometimes when we have it. However, let's talk about joy. Not the just all the youth in this case, but that word joy. And it says the Greek word for joy is chara. A word derived from the word charis, which is the Greek word for grace. Now this is an important, this is important to note, for it tells us categorically that joy or shara is produced by charis or grace of God. In other words, this joy isn't a human-based happiness that comes and goes, but it's something much deeper, something much more that we can hold on to. We recognize that joy can share space with emotions. So you can be sad and yet still have joy. The joy shares the emotion with fear, anger, and even on happiness. So it tells me that joy is, is, is not just a feeling, but it's a supernatural experience which every Christian must have and should experience. The biblical definition of joy says that joy is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness that is dependent on who Jesus is rather than who we are or what is happening around us. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit abiding in God's presence and hope in his word. And this definition is taken from theologyfortherestofus.com. I'll read that again. The biblical definition of joy says that joy is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness that is dependent on who Jesus is rather than who we are or what is happening around us. It comes from the Holy Spirit abiding in God's presence and from the hope in his word. Now that is joy, real joy, wonderful joy. So the first thing that we need to understand about joy is that, or through joy, is that it comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. It is one of the attributes of having the Holy Spirit. 
For in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, list some of these attributes. It speaks about love. It speaks about peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. But it also speaks about joy. One of the attributes of the Holy Spirit. The, super, the Holy Spirit supernaturally gives us great and lasting joy when we are faced with affliction. So despite what we are going through, or the challenges that we may have, things that will sometimes wipe our smile away, but when we have that joy, nothing can change it. For the word of God says, weeping, Mary endure for the night, but joy, but joy comes in the morning. So even before your night is finished, we can all experience that joy that comes only from God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 2, it says, We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty has overflowed in a wealth of generosity of their part. So as I was saying earlier, joy has the ability to exist even when there is great affliction. It has to be the ability to exist even when we are going through extreme poverty or things are certainly not going our way. And like this church at Macedonia, it existed among them. They had this fullness of joy despite and despite what they were going through. It has nothing to do with what we are going through. That is the joy that God gives to us. So we recognize then that there is an ever-present joy that comes from the Lord. There is an ever-present joy. Joy is something deep. Something that flows within. Something that only the Holy Spirit can give to us. We can't go and buy joy. You might be able to buy some things that will make you happy. You might buy a car and you feel good about it. Because you're no longer catching the bus. But that car starts to break down and call for parts. And you're spending lots and lots of money and you're not happy no more. You want to know why you're going to do this, going on and buy this car. Or sometimes you put yourself in a situation or in a relationship thinking that it will bring joy or happiness. But things quickly go south. But the joy that we have, that deep, that flows from deep within, can only be received through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So Psalm 5 verse 11 tells us, But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them that those who love your name may exult in you. So we have joy, we have rejoicing, a word that is used over 200 and something times, 200 and something times in the New Testament. Psalm 16 verse 11 tells us, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them. No, sorry, I'm reading Psalm 5 again. Psalm 16 verse 11. You made known to me the path of life, for it says in a familiar passage, in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So contrary to what some of us may believe, and what we have gone through in life is not always found in the, in the parties and fets and things like that. But it's rather found in Jesus Christ. 
Romans 14 verse 17 tells us, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. Now I like my belly. For me, Saturdays is sauce day. And when I eat sauce, I feel happy. Yeah. So I don't you know, eat sauce from every place. I, 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 you know, but I know when I like a good sauce. Marinated with a little pepper and the lime. And I know how to make it, but I know for sure know how to eat it. And I like, I like the, 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 the pudding, the, we call it black, the, the, the black pudding, steam pudding. So my Saturdays are fulfilled with sauce. And especially when, you know, the bright fruit, I like the bright fruit, especially if it's the yellow meat bright fruit. And sauce brings me pleasure. But the joy that I'm, we are looking for, that we all crave, that makes our, our, our lives different, comes from God. It don't come from Lemonary where we sometimes buy it, or from Sam Shaw, but it comes from God and his word. The joy we all see as Christians. So joy makes us satisfied. Several times the word of God describes joy as full or being complete. It satisfies the heart in a way that temporary happiness cannot. Psalms, verse, Psalms chapter 4 verse 7 tells us, you have, put on, you have put more joy in my heart than they have when grain and wine abound. Sometimes even the Bible talks about drinking away our sorrows. Some people, you know, use all sorts of devices in an effort to fill a void that is within them. How about we just introduce them to Jesus? How about we just tell them that the real joy that you are seeking does not come from the wrong bottle or from the cigarettes or from the weed that they will smoke, but it comes from God and his blessings. That is the sort of experience we ought to be sharing. So Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 to 2 tells us, so if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. The joy within. Now, the one of the things about joy is that it can't be lost. You know, we could lose our joy. We could lose our joy. In fact, remember David and Psalms 51? Just turn to it. Psalms 51, verse 10. He says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your holy name from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Now, he uses that word restore. Why else would you use the word restore? The word restore implies that some, there was something that you once had that needs to be recovered. So sometimes you see a building in its derelict state and we say, especially if it's part of the natural, National Trust, this building should be restored. In other words, you're saying that this building needs to be restored to its former glory or condition. So David, after he made some 
poor choices, some bad decisions, as we all have within some time in our life, except for Celia, have all made good decisions. Some of us have made some really bad decisions. And sometimes it can cause us to lose out on this joy that God has willingly given to all of us. But like David, we can say, if we recognize that something is missing, restore to us the joy of our salvation. And once again, give me a willing spirit to sustain me. Because sometimes we could get tired and we could get weary. But God can step in and make that and restore us back to our former condition, back to that condition, that new love that God would have given to us. Note that he didn't ask God to return his salvation, just the joy of it. Salvation is yours. It has been freely given to us. But he asks for him to God to restore the joy of that said salvation. Sin and dis disobedience can cause us to lose hope. But we just have to ask God, Lord, restore. And God will. He will restore. We recognize for sure that there is joy in the presence of the Lord. But that's what you hear this morning. You don't want somebody handsome face? Oh, just to show off the person sitting to you pretty close. But you want to experience the presence of the Lord. For you recognize that there is joy in the presence of the Lord. Joy unspeakable and full of glory the half that has never yet been told you see God recognizes this and as we are getting ready to get into the Christmas mood just now one or four are going to be playing Christmas songs ain't quite sure how to get that work out. Skipping independence, we're going straight into Christmas. And God recognized that for his people, they need that joy, that sustaining joy, that charis, that grace. So he sent his son, born of a babe. So in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, and the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you, in a Christmas message yet, by talking about it, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So God gave joy in the form of Jesus Christ, in the form of the Spirit, joy has been given to us. Amen. So there is joy in the presence of God. In Psalm 16, thou wilt show me the path of life. In the presence is fullness of joy. And as, I, as we said earlier, and at the right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Happiness stems from joy. In John chapter 17, verse 13, yes, giving you a lot, a lot of scripture. In Jesus' prayer, he says, And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy. So who the joy really belongs to? It belongs to God. 
that they might have Ryan's joy. <laughs> you don't want my joy. Ryan's having big trouble. That they may have my joy, Jesus' joy, fulfilled in themselves. So it's all about the fulfillment and the complete joy that God wants us to have. By putting our faith in Jesus, we have his joy in us. And by trusting him as, his, as our savior, our joy then is complete. So, in other words, Jesus is the true meaning of that fullness of joy. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. May God bless you this morning.